All right, today, uh, Section 11.1, if you look in your book and you're on page 710, the title is Graphing Square Root Function. But in actuality, we're not going to graph, we're going to sketch. This is going to be similar to what, we what I had you do in Chapter 10, where I had you sketching quadratics in standard form, in intercept form, and in vertex form. You're gonna, I'm going to have you sketch square root functions. Now, when you sketch a square root function, that means you're not going to get to use your calculator. So this is going to be similar to that. If you're paying attention now, um, you can sketch these in a few basic steps. Um, a couple things to, I guess, know before um, we get into the actual sketching. A square root function, square root functions are radicals with an independent variable inside the radicand. Now, when I say that, it, you might be like, what the heck are you talking about? Okay, well, let's go through that again. A square root function, functions, rem remember, mean you have an input and an output. You have something you can plug in for X, and it's going to give you something for Y. It's like Sal said earlier in the year, you plug something in the box, and the box will spit out something. All right? Square root functions are radicals, there's my radical, with an independent variable, that means an x value, inside the radicand that's inside the square root. That's what a square root function is. We will only be working with square root functions, not cube roots and so on. So we will only be working with square roots. And finally, one last thing, again, we will not be using calculators for any of these sketches. And we're going to start off by sketching the parent function for the square root function first. And this one we'll just put in our notes. And I'm going to use this sheet of graph paper. Now, normally when we make sketches, we don't use graph paper. But I want you to be fully aware of what the parent function looks like for a square root function, what, what a square root function ultimately will look like. So we're going to start off with the most basic kind of square root function. It would be y equals just the square root of x. And I'm going to start off by just filling out a table real quick. So I'm going to plug in some values. Now, let's think about this. When I plug in values for x, I can't plug in negatives. You can't take the square root of a negative number. So I, I can't plug in any negatives. My domain is only 0 and positive numbers for x. So I'll plug in 0, and if I plug in 0, I get 0. And I just talked about that. What numbers can I plug in for x? I can only plug in 0 and positives. So here are some things I'll plug in. When I plug in 0, the square root of 0 is 0. So plugging in 0 gives me 0. When I plug in 1, the square root of 1 is 1. Now you might be wondering, why did I jump from 1 to 4? Well, think about it. If I plug in 2, square root of 2, uh, I don't know what that is. I'm sure you don't either. Okay, so I want to plug in... Uh, perfect squares, because I'll, I'll plug in 4, because I do know the square root of 4, it's 2, and I'd also know the square root of 9 is 3. And when we do square root functions, we only use the positive roots, you know, technically uh, we could get positive and negative, but we're only going to use the positive roots here. So let's now sketch this real quick. I have a point at 0, 0, and at 1, 1, and 4, 2, and 9, 3. So here's 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2, 9, 3. And then as best I can, I'm going to make a curve. And remember, this keeps on going up and slowly out forever. And that's a look at what a square root function looks like. Um, you notice it kind of looks like a sideways half parabola. So that's what square root functions are. They open sideways, and they look like it's a half parabola. And that's what we're going to be practicing today in our book work. I'm going to be having you sketch square root functions. And maybe I should have you look and go ahead to page 713. And we're going to do some of these problems together on this video to walk you through that process. Um, they're going to ask you, look, if you look at numbers 3 to 14 on page 713, they're going to ask you to graph the function, and I'm saying sketch it, sketch the function, identify its domain and range, and then compare the graph with the graph of the parent function. Okay, so before we get into that, let's talk about square root functions. And I guess, the, I guess before I get into this, I'm going to add one more thing that I don't have on this slide. 
Okay, square root functions are very similar to, um, let me get this out of the way, they're very similar to vertex form quadratics. Now let's re go back and recall vertex form quadratics. Remember they look maybe like, let's say like this. I'm just going to make up something. If you remember in vertex form quadratics, the vertex was right here. And if I plug in 2, I get 0. So plugging in 2 and then y is 5, that would be my vertex. And I know my parabola opens up because a was positive, And I can find another point by plugging in points for x. This is almost in that same form, OK? In a square root function, the a value tells me, does this open up or down? Is the half parabola opening up, or is the half parabola opening down? If a is positive, it opens up. If a is negative, it opens down. The number at, that I can plug in for x that makes the 0, that's the x value of where the square root function starts. And then the k value is the y value. And I think probably walking through that will be easier to show than what I'm doing here. So again, the a value, remember, it'll tell me, it, it'll tell me um, does the parabola open up or down. Remember, the term down is reflection. It also would indicate stretch or shrink, although honestly, I don't know that those two are as important. If, if, the, if the A value's absolute value is greater than 1, we're stretching this. That means it's going to open faster. If, it's less, if the absolute value of A is less than 1, it shrinks. That means it's going to open more slowly. And again, if A is positive, the, the square root function opens up. If it's negative, it's going to reflect, which means open down, just like on parabolas, OK? And then here, this gives you, as I said, the starting point. Like here, 2, 5 was the starting point of our quadratic. That's called a vertex. Now, we don't call the starting point on a square root function a vertex, but it is the initial point or where the, where the function starts at, all right? And what you plug in for x to make this 0 is the x value of that starting point, and then whatever k is is the y value, all right? So let's actually do a few of these and walk through that process, OK? I want to sketch 0.5 square root x. So a couple things here. Let's, let's think about that. I'm going to add some writing to this again, OK? This really means, when I write it out again, it really means I have y equals 0.5 square root x minus nothing. You notice there was nothing subtracted in here. And I'm adding nothing out here. All right, so first of all, my vertex is at, if I plug in 0 here, I get 0. The vertex, or I shouldn't call it the vertex. These don't have a vertex. But the starting point is at 0, 0. So I put a point 0, 0. And I know that this thing is opening up because my a value is positive. OK? But there is a little bit of a shrink because the absolute value of this is less than 1. So it's going to open up, but it's going to be a little bit more slow than normal, OK? When I have you sketch these, I'm going to ask you to find three other points. So let's do that, OK? Let's plug in some numbers for x that I can get the square root of. If I plug in 1, the square root of 1 is 1, and 1 times a half is a half. So plugging in 1 gives me a half. I'll plug in 4, because I can do that, too. Square root of 4 is 2, and half times 2 is 1. And if I plug in 9, the square root of 9 is 3. So I get a 3 here, and half times 3 is 1 and a half. And now I can plot those, or at least sketch them on paper. So here's 1 and a half. Here's 4, 1. And here's 9, 1 and a half. And now I can sketch that. So this function. When I compare it to the parent function, oh, I should talk about that. When I compare it to the parent function, you can tell it shrunk, because here's the parent function. It shrunk, which means it's slower by a factor of a half, but it is still opening up like the parent function. Now, domain and range. This function has a domain of x greater than or equal to 0. In other words, I can plug in 0 or any number bigger than 0 in here. That's my domain. 
and you can see that my range, when I plug in zero, this whole thing works out to zero, so my range will be zero or anything greater than zero. So I just did number five with you there as an, as, as an example. Uh, we'll do another one. We'll do a few more. Okay. Let's go to 17. And 17 is on the next page, and the, it's the same directions. They're going to ask you to graph the function. They're going to ask you to identify the domain and range and compare this to the graph of the parent function. Well, first of all, first thing is, my A value is 1, and you might be looking at that. Okay, there's my A value. I don't see anything. That means there's 1 here. So there is no stretch or shrink, but we do know that my square root function has to open up because A was positive. Okay, the starting point of this, if I plug in 0 for X, I get 0, but my Y value is 1, so 0, 1 is my starting point. So I'm going to sketch that. I need to get three other points. So I'm going to make a table, and let's get three other points. If I plug in 1, I can do the square root of 1, so let's do that. The square root of 1 is 1, and 1 plus 1 is 2. That's how I'm getting a 2. When I plug in, when I plug in 1, that works out to 2. Now I'm going to take... I'll plug in 4 because that's another perfect square. The square root of 4 is 2, and 2 plus 1 is 3. So plugging in 4 got me 3. And then I'm going to plug in 9 because that's another perfect square. The square root of 9 is 3, and 3 plus 1 is 4. So plugging in 9 gave me 4. Let's sketch that. So here was my 0, 1, my starting point. 1, 2, 4, 3, 9, 4, sketched. Okay, my domain and range. I can plug in any value for x that's 0 or greater. So the domain is x greater than 0. My range, you notice, my lowest y value is 1, and then my y values just keep on increasing. So my range is y greater than or equal 1. And now let's compare this to the parent function. I'm going to quickly just draw the parent function here. You'll be able to see that um, right here. Okay, you notice the parent function, let's get this out of the way, it starts at 0, 0, goes through 1, 1, 4, 2, just like we showed on, on a prior slide. You notice how this square root function is shifted one unit up, but it opens in the same, there's no stretch or shrink, it still opens up. So this, parent, this function is just shifted one unit up when compared to the parent function. Okay, it's the same as the parent function, just shifted one unit up. We'll do a, just a couple more, make sure you got this down. Okay, here's another, here's another uh, square root function. Let me just add one little thing to that. Um, this is like having a plus zero out here. Okay, so when I get my starting point, does it make sense that when I plug in a negative two here, I get nothing? So there's my x value, negative two and then 0 is my y value. So that's where my function starts at, negative 2, 0. Since a, let me get a different color, since a is 1, I know my parent function opens upward, and there's no stretch or shrink to it. And now i got to get a couple other points, so let's make a table. And I'm thinking, what can I plug in here to make this easy to work with? Well, let's say I plugged in 1. Well, that's not going to be good because 1 plus 2 is 3. Do you know the square root of 3 without your calculator? And I'm sure as you're sitting there thinking, you're like, I don't. Okay, so what can I plug in that's going to make this easy to find the square root of? of? Well, I, I chose negative 1 first because negative 1 plus 2 is 1. I can get the square root of 1 very easy. The square root of 1 is 1 and 1 plus 0 is 1. So when you plug in negative 1, this whole thing worked out to 1. And then I plugged in 2 because when I plug in 2, I get something easy. 2 plus 2 is 4, and the square root of 4 I can do easy. That's 2. And then I plugged in 7, and that's going to work out nice because 7 plus 2 is 9, and the square root of 9 is 3, so plugging in 7 gave me 3. And now I sketched this. Okay, so now I want the domain and range. 
Well, the domain, I can plug in negative 2 or anything bigger than negative 2. And the reason is if I plug in negative 2, negative 2 plus 2 is nothing. I can do the square root of nothing. It's nothing. So anything that I plug in for x that's negative 2 or greater, I can use. So that's my domain. My domain is greater than or equal to negative 2. In fact, can you see that on this picture? Can you see, let me, uh, let me do this. Can you see on the picture, if I'm going to use a red marker here, that my graph starts at negative 2 for x and is only going to the right? So there's my domain. x value is greater than or equal to negative 2. And then let me get another color. My range is y greater than 0. Can you see that on the graph? My lowest y value is right here at 0, and it only continues to rise. So my range is y greater than or equal to 0. And let me just get those two out of there now. Okay. And then when I compare this to the parent function, uh, you sh I hope that you're noticing that this is exactly the same as the parent function. It's just shifted two units left. And that's what I wrote. It's just shifted two units left when compared to the parent function. And I think I got maybe one or two. Just to keep the video, my video's already gone on for 16 minutes. I don't want it to go more. I'm just going to show you seven. I won't talk through it. Okay. I hope you have the concept down where A is my telling me if I'm stretching, shrinking, opening up or down. This is stretching and opening up. Um, since, let me add on to this. Since this is like having, I'm just going to add on, it's like having plus 0 in here and then plus 0 out here. My starting point is 0, 0. If I plug in 0, I get 0 and 0. i got to find three other points, sketch it, and compare. And then one more, 31, uh, looking at this, can you see my starting point is at 2, 5? That's where this is going to start at. Actually, let me do it that way. 2, 5 is my starting point. Since A is 1, there's no stretch or shrink. This opens up. And then i got to make a table. And I, and I wanted to plug in things that are easy to work out. So I plugged in 3 because 3 minus 2 is 1. And I can do the square root of 1 is 1. And 1 plus 5 is 6. And I plugged in 6 and 11 and so on. And then comparing that to the parent function, do you notice how do you notice how my graph, it's exactly the same. It had the same stretch, 1. The difference is it's been sh my, my starting point's been shifted up 5 and right 2. And here was my last one, last slide. Um, real quick again, going through that, you notice I'm starting this at 5, negative 3. If I plug in 5, I get 0, and then negative 3, just like we did on vertex form of quadratics. Since I have a half, that means this is opening up. It is shrunk. I got to get three other points for my table um, as best I can. The half's going to give me some fractions I'll have to deal with. Six minus five is one. I can figure that out. Square root of one's one. Half of one's a half, and half minus three is negative two and a half. And then I plugged in nine and fourteen because plugging in nine gives me nine minus five is four. The square root of four I can figure out easy, and I plugged in fourteen. 14 minus 5 is 9. I can def definitely get the square root of 9. Okay, so there's my points that I can plot. Okay, let me move this over. Can you see by the graph the domain is x greater than 5? My graph for x starts at 5 and is only right of 5. And my range is it starts at negative 3 and only rises. That's why y greater than or equal negative 3. And when I compare this graph to the parent function, you notice it's been shifted down 3, right 5. But it also, this is being shrunk in comparison to the parent function because A was a half. I hope that video made sense to you. Um, when you come to class tomorrow, if you have questions, we can look at some more. It, you, might, I, you might be ready to start the homework right now. All right?